Hey, I want to give you a special invite to my yearly conference called the Freedom in Life Conference. This conference is all about motivation and inspiration to carry you to living your best life. This year's theme is The Secret to Your Success, based on my new book, the Village for Networking with the Experts, Great Motivational Talks, and Financial and Holistic Empowerment. It's our seventh year, and this year is going to be even better than ever. I'll see you. Somebody's got to come along to help make this better. Um, I, I just thought, okay, there will be this Prince Charming, and I'll get married, and, and he'll have it all figured out, and together we'll just be rich. I really thought we'd get married and be rich. Anybody else ever think that way? <laughs> My sweet friend in the back, she just closed her eyes and just <laughs> nodded her head like, we're, we don't even have to talk anymore about it. You can relate. I really thought that we would be rich and uh, quickly realized that is not going to happen. My husband is the youngest of three. Everything he got was passed down to him. So here's the oldest of five. I have this real saver mentality because I don't want the lights to get shut off again. And I'm married to this guy who's the youngest of three who just wants to spend it, just spend it. Do you think we butt heads a little bit in our house? <laughs> we do. What messages have you been given? What's your mindset around money? What's your financial upbringing, your financial handling or thinking around money? Where does that come from? And I say that, and I'm taking time here because if there are goals and objectives that you have, and retirement's a big one for everybody in this room, those are goals that you have, and it's important to you that you achieve those goals. If there are maybe roadblocks or hindrances or mindsets that you've hung on to that are there for whatever reason, it could be difficult or a challenge for you to really address those, to maybe make some behavioral changes. So it's important to consider what's that financial upbringing? What's that financial mindset? Where did it come from? So here's where the rubber meets the road. After we got married and I realized, this is a mess. <laughs> This is a hot mess. <laughs> he's got his bills and his information, and he's not sharing or telling. It's like playing cards, and you got your hand, and you're not showing anybody. That's how it was. And he had, he had his stuff. I had mine over here. I wasn't showing. We had this, this strategy. We were going to just divide and conquer, and it just wasn't working. And Can I survive a short-term emergency? Katrina, Rita, Exxon, Enron. My husband was laid off twice in a six-year period of time. Took 10 months to get another job. Can I survive a pink slip? I mean, so just replace short-term emergency with whatever the situation might be. Can I survive the roof having some damage? Can I survive an accident in the car? Wasn't my fault, or it was, but I need to pay the deductible. Here's the bottom line. The rules are different for ladies. Really is. I wish I could stand here and say, no, that's not the case. We can maybe kind of skate through. We don't have to worry. But we do need to be aware of some key points. We have historically earned less. Even recent census data says. And you tell me, for every 75 cents that we make, how much are guys making? A dollar, exactly. So there's a gap. And someone might be saying, it's only 25 cents, no big deal. And I would say, when you compound that over time, it is a big deal. More of us are working, and that's great. Yet, nine out of 10 women in the United States are making about $45,000 a year. Women have more financial responsibilities. We're the ones who are shouldering, uh, working inside the home, outside the home, raising the family. And then there's another important dynamic, um, interrupted work histories. Now, when I say that, what comes to mind for you? Interrupted work histories. Yes, taking time off to raise children and such, and I've done that a couple of times. Let me give you two interesting numbers. Men, on average, take about 16 months off to raise children, care for family members. Compare that to women, 11 and a half years that we take off, on average, to care for children and family members. So when you factor in lower income levels with greater interrupted work histories, there's a greater challenge for us in terms of achieving the goals we have. We live longer than men as well. Could be anywhere from six to eight years longer. The average age of widowhood is 56. So the likelihood is that we will be the sole financial response, sole financial decision maker in our homes.
And so it's so vital that we are aware of our, our financial needs and responsibilities and that we make plans to face them and address them. So let's say I brought $600 for everybody tonight. Somebody sat up, yes, great. <laughs> 600 bucks. Here's the deal though, you need to invest in one of my market options. Market A, it is a strong upward trending market. And you can tell because we start off at $10 a share, we go up to 12, 14, by the sixth month we're at $20 per share. Pretty exciting stuff. The second option is what I'll describe as a swing market. We start off at $10 a share, we drop, 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 and then finally get back up to our original share price. And then the last option, a bear market. Bear, sustained downturn in the market. We start at $10, we drop, drop. In the fourth month, we're at $1 per share. We hold, and then we come back just to a $4 per share price. So by show of hands, how many of you would like to invest your 100 a month in option A? Let me just see your hands. A few people, okay, great. Okay, lots of hands. How many of you would go for option C? I'm sorry, option B, the swing market. How many would go for the swing market? I love it. There's a lady going, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's cute. Now I'm picking on you. Okay, great. How many would go for the last option, the bear market? Sustained downturn in the market. A few hands here. Okay. Let me ask this. How many of you wouldn't have raised your hands no matter what I asked you? <laughs> She goes, me, I'm not playing. I want the dessert, the soda, let's go, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm being silly, but here's a real learning opportunity. Tell me why one option made more money than the others. Bought shares. I heard it over there. Bought lots of shares. That's the, that's the correct re response, ladies. You'll notice here in option C, we made more money. Each option made a lot, but option C made more. And here's why. We bought shares on sale. And I say this, and it sounds so silly, but it's like buying tuna fish when it's on sale. <laughs> My husband is at home a lot with our daughter, and he can get tuna fish open and prepared without burning anything down. <laughs> And so I like to come home to a home when it's on sale, when tuna fish, star kiss, packed in spring water is even reduced five cents a can. What do you think Charlotte does? I buy up, I stock up. And that's what it's like with your investments. You're putting money in on a regular basis. What I'm simply being silly about here is dollar cost averaging, systematic investing. If you are putting money aside in your 401k, your 403b, it's the same thing. But if you're not doing that or you have extra money, and you could be doing this even if you're retired. I don't want any retired lady saying, ah, it doesn't apply to me. If you're taking required, required minimum distributions from your, your IRA, could you be putting those into the market and participating there? I would say yes. If you're Welcome back to Live on Lakeside. I'm Larry Macon Jr. And now it's time to reveal this week's Everyday Champion. Today I would like to introduce to you Colin Bell. Colin is a financial consultant for Thriving Financial. He helps people all over Northeast Ohio make better choices with their money. Welcome to the show, Colin. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Good to have you here today and good to have your daughter Ava who's just here and I know she assists you and kind of helps you out a little bit I'm sure in your office. Absolutely. So That's tell correct. us a little bit about Thriving Financial. You're a financial advisor for them and you really help people out. Tell us a little bit about that company. Sure. Well, Thriving Financial is a not-for-profit financial services organization serving the broader Christian market. Uh, we have over 2,000 advisors nationwide. You know, we're a Fortune 500 company, and we've been around for over 100 years. Wow. So what, what I do as a, a financial consultant with Thrivent is I meet with my clients, and we come up with financial solutions to whatever their biggest financial goals and concerns are. Gotcha. Well, you, you really make a difference in the lives of individuals and families. Tell me particularly how you guys do that and how you do that as a financial consultant. Sure. Well, I, I think the, the number one thing that I try to do when I meet with a prospective client for the first time is just ask a lot of questions. Uh, what I'm trying to accomplish is to find out from them what are their most important goals 
financial goals and financial concerns. And everyone is different. So my financial goals could be different than yours or someone else's. It could be everything from planning for college, for example, seven years from now, <laughs> or maybe retirement planning. Um, even getting into retirement, you might have saved all these assets, but what's the most tax efficient way to take the, uh, your retirement assets out in retirement? It could be legacy planning or the segment before planning for some sort of long-term care need. Wow, so you guys do a lot. We do. And so uh, one of the things I'd like to ask you about is generosity. Um, you're on this segment because you're an everyday champion because you show and exhibit generosity and really push that around Northeast Ohio. Tell us about those programs kind of geared around generosity that you do. Sure, so where, where Thriving is a little bit different as a financial services organization is that um, part of our mission statement is to help our members and our clients be wise with money, but also to live generously. And so some of the ways we do that is um, we have different generosity pieces that Thrivent provides. As just an example of what we did last weekend, we got a group of Thrivent members together and we did an outreach program at Mount Zion of Oakwood Village. We got two churches together, Mount Zion and Hope Lutheran in Aurora. Beautiful church, by the way. <laughs> exactly, right. <laughs> and what we did through some help with, through Thrivent, through our members, uh, we were able to buy a lot of food from the dollar store. You can buy a lot of food in bulk from the dollar store. Right. And we had basically an assembly line of these church members putting together uh, baskets of food for the New Covenant Food Pantry in East Cleveland so that the people in need who come and get food at the food pantry would have enough food to take home for the weekend. Wow. So that's just one example of some of the generosity events we do, and Ava was a part of that as well. Gotcha, Ava, did you have a good time? Yeah. Yeah, you were able to really serve people. That's the awesome thing about it. So, so with these generosity programs, um, how does it help people when it comes to their kind of their financial help? Does it kind of put them in a different perspective when they're... It, it does, and at the end of the day, my job is to help people achieve their financial goals. Um, but if we can help them live generously and give them some ways to do that and to give back to the community, all the better. All the better. That's great. So tell us, how can people find you, Colin? I, I know there's some viewers who need some financial help. They'd love to learn a little bit more about Thriving Financial. How can they find you? Sure. So the, the easiest way to just be to go to our website, uh, www.thrivent.com. Uh, you can search under my name, Colin Bell. Uh, we also have some uh, other great local representatives in the area. And some of the programs we talked about uh, through the Thrivent Action Teams and the Thrivent Communities, uh, there's some information on the website as well about those programs. Sounds good. Well, again, you're an everyday champion. I appreciate you being on the show. Thanks, Ava, and cool. continue to do what you're doing. You're the uh, probably the, how old are you again? 11. You're 11 years old, so you're probably the only 11 year old on TV right now, so <laughs> this is your moment. So again, thanks for being on the show, and Colin, thanks for all you do. Absolutely, thank you, Pastor Larry. And I wanna thank you, the faithful live on Lakeside and Everyday Champion viewers for tuning in. But before I go, I always like to leave you something to think about. Turn your life around. You know, many times we go through our lives like a train on a track with no twists, turns, or curves. However, sometimes it's good to turn around, change direction, and do something different. You know, a wise man once told me that insanity is doing the same things all the time, but expecting some different results. Well, if you wanna have better results in your life, you've gotta change directions. Maybe you need to apply for a new job, get involved in a new activity, start dating again, or start a business you've always thought you wanted to get involved in. Whatever it is, real positive change in your life starts one U-turn at a time. So my advice for you today is to turn around, change direction, and see how things will change for the better. Well, that's my encouraging word for you this week, and I'm glad you tuned in to see who's doing some great things in our community. Remember to visit my website at LarryMakingJr.com or at me on Facebook and Instagram as I post daily inspiration to help you throughout your day. I speak every week, and you can find out where by going to mzov.org. Be sure to contact me and let me know who you think should be next week's Everyday Champion. There's good people doing some great things, and I'm glad I get to share that with you every single week. We're live on Lakeside, and we'll be right back. Hi, you guys. Tracy Fisher here with The Wellness Coach. I am delighted to be joining you at the Mount Zion Church of Oakwood Village and to join Pastor Larry in helping you create a healthy life, even in the midst of these stressful times. And so that's what we're going to talk about, stress. And we all know that stress is bad for us, right? Well, today I hope to shift your paradigm just a little bit and share how you can approach stress 
slightly differently and actually use it to your advantage. We all think that stress is bad for us, but recent research is showing us that it isn't the stress itself that is bad for us, but the way that we perceive that stress that actually impacts our health. And here's one study that estimates that there are 80,000 deaths per year linked to stress, but what basically amounts to our thoughts about the stress and not the stress itself. So this is what happens when we have a stress response. Typically our heart rate goes up and our blood vessels constrict, which is one of the reasons that stress is linked to cardiovascular disease. But if we change the way that we think about our physical response to stress, when we find ourselves in stressful situations, like this environment that we are going through right now, or if we have a big presentation or children at home that we have to homeschool or figuring out how we're going to work from home. When our body starts to have this physiological response, what we can do is instead of thinking about it as stress, we can say, you know what? That heartbeat that is getting increased right now, that means that I am ready, that I am ready for action and I can handle this. And when I feel like my breath is a little bit um, increased, that that just means that I'm getting more oxygen to my brain, which is true. And now I am ready to be focused. And then if we're sweating a little bit, that just means that your body is warmed up and ready to go. Now, I am not just what I call spreading pink paint over stress. There, there is science that backs up how we think think about stress really has a physiological impact. And the studies show that when we are perceiving stress or an external circumstance differently, that we literally have more confidence, that we have reduced stress levels and anxiety levels. And of course, it has an increased impact on our performance. And Best of all, I believe that your experience in the midst of all of this is so much better. And the most amazing part of all of this is that when you perceive stress as an ally and you perceive it differently and you think about it differently, that it literally has a physiological impact on your body. And so instead of those blood vessels constricting they do not constrict and they are linking the physio physiological response to the same feeling that we have when we are experiencing courage and joy. So what is the bottom line here? It means that at the exact point in time when you are starting to feel stressed that you get to decide whether or not to go there. And it's up to you to interrupt the pattern and to shift your thoughts. You can recognize what's happening in your body when you feel stressed, and you can think of those physical sensations as energy that you can harness and service to your results and who you want to be. So what do we do? One, first discover when are you stressed and identify it and be aware of it. And then secondly, you get to design your response and think, how can I use this energy in service to my results instead of feeling just very harried and out of control, feeling like you're running around with your hair on fire? And then the third piece is to dare to be aware in those moments and to choose differently, to choose who you want to be. And basically, all of this is about the 3D methodology that I use. It is discovering and witnessing yourself, then designing a purposeful response to it all, and then daring to be in the moment. So I'm not saying that you're going to go through here and say, hey, give me some more stress. I'm loving this. But you will definitely be more conscious and aware around it and be able to use it to your advantage. So my wish and hope and prayer for you all today is that you will know that you are in control and that you have this and that you have the ability to create your great, no matter what is going on in this world. Sending you prayers and wishes and wellness for your family and for you in the midst of this environment and to know that you have many people on your side.
Welcome back to Live on Lakeside. I'm Larry Macon Jr. And now it's time to reveal this week's Everyday Champion. Today I would like to introduce to you Ramona Robinson. She's been one of our city's top news anchors, journalists, and TV personalities. However, now she's also a motivational speaker and author. She travels all over, inspiring people of all ages from all walks of life. Welcome to the show, Ramona. Oh, so good to be here. Yeah, Larry, so good, good to, to see you. you. Thank you so much. And you have this new book out, Your Voice is Your Power. Tell us about this book? Well, uh, Your Voice is Your Power basically was born out of my first book, my memoir, A Dirt Road to Somewhere. And it was born out of conversations I had with mostly women, some men, uh, who wanted to know you. Uh, first of all, they were so surprised by my story and all the obstacles and roadblocks I faced uh, trying to become a television journalist. And they mainly had two questions. How were you able to listen to God's voice? How do you hear God's voice? And number two, how do you push past the fear that sometimes can be debilitating? You feel stuck, uh, your fear of failure. And so I try to answer those questions in this new book. Yeah you address a lot of things like fear, anxiety, and depression. Is that something that people are dealing with these days that you're noticing? Oh, anxiety and depression is at an all-time high, especially wow. among our, our young girls. A lot of them are suffering from perfection and rejection and, and trying to keep up with the images they see on social media. So I address those things. I have a chapter in the book that deals specifically with social media trolls who would come after me and wow. how I <laughs> dealt with that. And also the fear feeling of youngsters not measuring up. What can you do? What are some of the things? And, and I also talk about in the book a young girl her parents asked me to talk to her because she suddenly started exhibiting this risque behavior, wearing really short dresses and, you know, low cut tops. And when I talked to her and asked her, why are you doing this all of a sudden? What's happening? Yeah, what's because I on? think they thought it was drugs or, mm -hmm. and uh, she said basically she felt like she didn't measure up at school. Wow. All of her friends uh, who were in uh, sophomores and in 11th grade, they had boys boyfriends or they had boys that were interested. None of the boys were interested in her and she felt less attractive. So wow. she, she thought if I wear clothing like this, I'll get some attention. So it's just, you know, it, it's hard to tell, especially kids, things will get better. Right. Wait on the Lord, pray. They want it here, now, right now. Tell me something concrete I can do now. So I address those things in the book. Well, I think you are very much needed uh, in our community to help, especially our young women. So I just want to let you know, I appreciate all that you're doing and spreading this word. And, and really, again, saying that your voice is your power. Now, I know there's a lot of people that want to see you and get you to sign a book and get a book. So tell us how how we can get that book and, and where we can possibly meet you. Well, you can go to my website, first of all, um, RamonaRobinson.com, okay. and you have to spell my name R-O-M-O, because if you put Ramona, R-A, you're going to get a psychic, right. and I okay. don't think you want that, <laughs> no, or maybe you do, <laughs> maybe some people do, but it's R-O-M-O-N-A, RamonaRobinson.com, and just click on the events page and you'll see where I'll be, but I am so excited for the new book. Yes. On this coming Saturday, okay. September 28th, from noon until 2 p.m., I yes. will be at Mount Zion Church of Oakwood Village. Gotcha. Uh, and I'll have a little reception. I'll do a little uh, speech. So it's really quick. It's a Saturday. Come on out. And I should mention, Larry, that um, a portion of the proceeds of my books go back to children's charities that oh, I'm passionate great. about. And so I've given back to Coach Sam's um, inner circle. Yeah. Um, so many organizations that you might recognize. The Gathering Place, uh, it's not a children's charity, but I, I love them, I love the work they do. And also I've uh, teamed up with Lily Pulitzer okay. of Legacy Village. Great. And we're giving back to the Jimmy Malone Scholarship and also Esperanza, two other organizations that benefit children. And it's just, I think this book is timely mm -hmm. because so many people are living scared right now. A yes. third of Americans say they are dissatisfied with their lives. Right. That's 100 so, million people. So it's right on time, Ramon. Yes. And I appreciate the work that you're doing. And I want to tell you, you're truly an everyday champion. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I want to also thank you, the faithful Live on Lakeside and Everyday Champion viewers for tuning in. But before I go, I always like to leave you something to think about. 
ignore your critics. You know, there was a man who had some challenges. He had some setbacks in his life, but after a few years, he fixed all of them and became very successful and did a lot of good in his life. However, the people around him would never let him forget what he did in his past. You know, those people are called critics. No matter what you do, you remember some people, you gotta remember that some people are not gonna be for you, even if you change. Uh, think about it, you can't meet all their demands and at the end of the day, you can't do everything that they ask you to do. They would still try to find something wrong with you, but you can learn to save a lot of heartache and pain by simply learning to ignore those voices. You don't need people's approval. You don't need to have them cheering you on all the time. You just need to stay on the right road and let your work speak for you. You know, people might try to take you down, but your work and your integrity will always build you back up. So keep focused on your future and don't let the critics stop your progress. Well, that's my encouraging word for you this week, and I'm glad you tune in to see who's doing some great things in our community. Remember to visit my website at LarryMakingJr.com or add me to Facebook or your Instagram as I post daily inspiration to help you throughout your day. I speak every week, and you can find out where by going to MZOV.org. Be sure to contact me and let me know who you think should be next week's Everyday Champion. There's good people doing some great things, and I'm glad I get to share that with you every Every single week, we're live on Lakeside, and we'll be right back. Hey, 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 Audra T. Jones here from Crystal Clear Communications. We're a full-service communications consulting firm. We specialize in branding and marketing. Wanted to just say thank you so much for allowing me the time to be with you this morning. Um, wanted to share just a few things that we share with clients on uh, what we call the marketing toolbox. Nine things that we think that every client and or brand should have. Mission and or vision statement. Elevator pitch, niche market, competitor analysis, social profiles and taking advantage of other modalities, content strategy, good graphics, quality graphics, a brand personality and taglines. So those are nine things that we think that every single business and or brand personality needs. So um, mission and vision statement, again, they're, they're different, so you should have both. An elevator pitch, can you explain to someone in less than 30 seconds what it is that you do and the value that you add for them? Niche market, is there something very unique that you and only you can provide to your clients? Competitor analysis, what, are your what is your competition doing? Do you know what they're doing and how are you analyzing the market? Again, using every single modality available um, and appropriate for your business and your target client, social media, email, guerrilla marketing, flyers, brochures, business cards, what does that mean for me for you? Content strategy. Do you have a plan for how you're going to get your content across to your clients? Is there a plan in place? We recommend an editorial calendar, which also includes the graphics. So you have to think about and plan out the graphics that are associated with the things that you're providing in terms of posts for your clients. Brand personality. What do people think about when they think about you? When they think about your brand, when they think about your logo, when they think about you as a speaker, an entrepreneur, a baker, whatever it is that you're doing. And last, tagline. So everybody needs a tagline so that people have something to fall back on. We thank you so much again for allowing us to join you. And uh, we just wish you a wonderful, wonderful day. Be blessed. Stay safe. Well, good day, Mount Zion people, friends and family. How are you today? My name is Gretchen, and I am feeling immensely blessed to have the opportunity to come to you via our incredible internet services that we have to bring you a message of health and wellness and vitality today. We were giving these amazing bodies by our good Lord himself. We are vessels for our soul and for that spirit. And we are charged to be able to treat it the very best that we can because we were made in his image, weren't we? So 90% of the time, we should be really taking the best care of ourselves that we possibly can and enjoying those other 10%, right? because things were put on this earth for us to enjoy and to love and to have fun. Uh, but for the most part, we need to be taking better care of ourselves. And in light of what is happening in our world today, it's even more important that we are better stewards of the vessel that we have. A little bit about me. Uh, I am a graduate of the University of Oregon with a master's in sports medicine 
biomechanics and exercise physiology. And I absolutely know deep in my soul that my purpose and my passion are to share my knowledge of health and wellness with you. There are so many crazy things floating around these days, and I'm here to provide you with some very basic key things that you can do starting today that will help you increase and add health. That's what we want to do. We want to increase and add health. And that may mean taking away a few things to give the body an opportunity to grow in that health, but that can only make us better. I am also an independent consultant with Arbonne International, and I will be offering you uh, some very deep insights through the knowledge that we have in terms of our body and our gut working together synergistically to bring health to us and to be able to fight off all these creepy crawly bacteria and viruses that are out there. You know, the research today is showing so many links between the gut, the immune system, the brain, and even the skin. There are things we can do to help support our body, beginning with boosting our beneficial good bacteria. And we can do this with good foods and good probiotics and everything to replenish and support our digestive tracts. So with that in mind, I would like to talk a little bit more about where we are in our state of health and how we can add health to us and bring more vibrancy and vitality into our world. We have the opportunity to give our bodies a reset and you can do that through a period of about 30 days. Some of us need 60 days, some of us need 90, but we all at least need about 30 days of clean eating to help us get a little more healthy. And the first thing that we need to do though is to make a decision. You know, there's so many of us that are wandering around just exhausted. You're thinking you have to have your coffee and your sugar. You know, why are there so many medications um, out there that people are having to take? Why are so many people suffering from new allergies that we haven't had before? You know, the first question in the doctor's office often is what medications you are on, not tell me what you eat. So many people walk around with headaches, daily headaches, and doctors are saying we need to lose weight, we need to lose health, get healthy, but what are they offering us in those terms? Eat less, exercise more, but folks, that just, just doesn't always work because we're not addressing what's going on internally. We're only trying to balance a chemical equation that just isn't balancing it out. And that's right, our bodies, we're a chemical experiment. We are, we have to get that balanced out. So how do we do this? Well, let's think about how our body is put together. Our fat is actually a very protective measure. And it surrounds us, usually starting in that midsection, to hold toxins away from our major organs. And that is good, but that happens when our system is backed up. Now let's look at some of these signs and symptoms that you see here today. Um, and you know, raise your hand or privately, and it, does this sound like you? Um, do you have fatigue and low energy? Do you crave sugar and salty foods? Do you have trouble sleeping? Do you have IBS or acid reflux, GERDs, Crohn's, headaches, migraines, irritability, congestion? If that's the case, it might be time for you to hit that reset button. And clean eating can help us do that. And detoxifying happens normally in our body, but most of us have a very difficult time with that process because our detoxifying organs are blocked up. So how can we take care of this? 
by doing a fast check on these statistics, we know that Americans spend more than 700 million on unhealthy energy sports drinks every year. And right now, I've been going to the grocery store and I'm seeing people load their cart with things like Gatorade and Powerade, Pepsi, um, alcoholic beverages. These things are really destroying our immune system. And autoimmune disease is one of the fastest growing diagnoses in the United States. All of these conditions, or at least most of these conditions, can be preventable with good, balanced eating plans with food and lifestyle changes. So this is what I've already alluded to, that why all of disease? We are having just way too much consumption of sugar, artificial sweeteners. Our meat and our dairy and our poultry is loaded with hormones and sugars and antibiotics, nitrates and fillers. Our food system, our fruits and vegetables that we know are so important are loaded with genetically modified um, and sprayed with glycosate and herbicides, pesticides and toxic chemicals. Our personal care products are loaded with toxic chemicals and they absorb into our skin. And our diets right now are very highly acidic and they upset that balance that we are looking for. And leading scientists report that cancer cells can't grow in an alkaline body. So I'm here to offer you a solution to this and some practical tips that you can use every day. If you look at this, great um, diagram over here. We can see that traditional diet just really doesn't do a whole lot to help us with the detoxifying process. Traditional diet and exercise kind of starts here with this little guy here. See all these little dots? It is uh, an explanation of the little toxins that are being held within of our fat cells. And when you start to diet and exercise, we're reducing calories, that's for sure. But we're not looking at um, the liver, the kidneys, and the skin to help our detoxifying organs. So when we don't address those systems, what happens is the body reverts to um, putting those fat cells way back on because here, we haven't actually lost those toxins. We haven't eliminated those. So we get this big rebound. But with a program such as this, proper dieting and cellular cleansing, we actually can release those toxins, thereby releasing the excess fat that's in the body. And we become an overall better version of ourselves. And isn't that what we are looking to do? So what do we need to focus on? And these five principles can be carried on in any aspect of your life. The Arbonne program just makes it easier for you to do. It is a comprehensive system of eating that will nourish your body and add health. So what are we going to do? We are going to eat clean. And what does that mean? primarily plant-based, whole foods versus chemically processed foods, foods free of artificial ingredients, or, and we're looking at organics and non-GMO whenever possible. These kinds of foods that are going to help add health include ginger and green tea, fermented foods such as kimchi and sauerkraut, kombucha, uh, coconut oil, any and all greens, arugula, spinach, kale, broccoli, cauliflower, not green, but it's a cruciferous vegetable. You know, all these vegetables that are kind of stinky, these are the ones that are gonna really help us add health. We are going to have cold water fish, omega-3s. We want garlic, we want onions. We want these good foods to help nourish our bodies increasing in nutrient intake. We also look at great supplements that we can have. Um, highly absorbable from Arbonne that are clean and they are healthy. We are going to avoid foods that are allergic 
addictive, inflammatory, and acidic. We're going to teach you tasty, healthy alternatives. And I like to call it parallel shifts, right? Parallel shifts in foods that are not serving our body to foods that are serving our body, that'll nourish our mind, our body, our soul, the way that it was intended to be nourished. We want to create balance, balance in our blood sugar, to reduce the sugar and carb cravings, to balance the pH where it needs to be balanced and create an environment that helps prevent dis-ease in the body. We're gonna remove the toxins by supporting our elimination organs, our kidneys, our liver, our GI tract, and our largest organ, our skin. Now, why do we avoid these things? Because these foods are inflammatory. And you can even Google search on time they did, Time Magazine did a huge article years ago on inflammatory processes in our body and why we need to drop that down. Folks, dairy products, including milk, cheese, ice cream, and whey-based products are highly inflammatory in the body. And honestly, we don't need those to boost our calcium intake. Calcium actually is acidic in the body. And what we do know scientifically is that when we are acidic and we need those buffering agents, calcium has actually leached from our bones to help us buffer that acidity. So we know that in science research, as soon as we've been told to increase our calcium intake via dairy, we actually increase the risk of um, osteoporosis by parallels because the most readily available component in our body to buffer those acids is calcium. And I can provide you more um, research on that if you so desire. Gluten, um, wheat, barley, rye, cookies, cakes, and bread, it is highly acidic in the body and it sets off a cascade of wanting more and more and more. I know that's why we can't stop eating one piece of bread or one bag of chips, right? We want to eliminate soy and corn. Both are highly GMO and highly pesticide laden. We want to eliminate, just for a period of time, coffee. The acidity in coffee is very high, but if you choose to remain drinking coffee, we wanna cut that way down and we wanna always go organic because the pesticides are very high. Soda for sure does not serve the body and alcohol, we've got to give our bodies a break from the toxins that are alcohol. It does not serve our liver and our kidneys. And especially in this time, we need to be fully aware of what's going on. We wanna eliminate any highly processed foods, chemical foods, artificial colors, flavors, sports drinks, and sodas. Folks, this is not a fad diet. This is eating for life and vibrancy and decreasing the dis-ease that we create inside of our body. So what do we eat? Nutrient-dense food, low glycemic fruits like berries, strawberries, blueberries, boysenberries, elderberries, non-GMO organic grains, brown rice, pasta, quinoa, lentils, root vegetables, um, nut seeds and butter. Sunflower butter is amazing. We want to eat free range eggs and poultry that are nitrate free. Grass fed beef, oh my gosh, and that's so high in vitamins E and A. So good for you and so many things like that where we need to help boost our ability to fight off virus and bacterial diseases. Avocado, avocado, avocado oil, olive oil, wild caught fish, right? Um, salmon, so good for you. Vegan protein powder from Arvon, sweet potatoes and other amazing vegetables, uh, organic apple cider vinegar, and so much more. When you look for fruits and veggies, on that tag, we want to look for the PLU that starts with the number nine, and then you know you're getting the very best way to go with those. So how does Arbon fit into all of this? We offer a comprehensive program with nutrient-dense products that will help the body to 
gently detoxify and bring it back to a more helpful and more vibrant state. You can see these products here behind me and I'm gonna closely, um, quickly I should say, go through these products that are part of this program that can help you uh, become a better version of yourself because we are all about healthy living from the inside out. In fact, we are the number one global brand because we are free from harmful chemicals. We have banned over 2,000 ingredients in our product. We are certified cruelty free. We are vegan in nature, meaning we are plant-based. We are nutraceutical, pharmaceutical grade, which is the highest form available. And we are dedicated to your education and to your well-being. And should you decide that this program is for you, I will personally coach you through this program and we can do this virtually one-on-one -on -one, and by our virtual Facebook groups. So how do we support you in doing this? The Arbonne 30 Days to Healthy Living program is a pure, clean, plant-based program with products to help you live your best life. Our protein powder in chocolate or vanilla has 20 grams of vegan protein. It's highly digestible, absorbable with a complete amino acid profile. It's delicious. And we're gonna have two of those meals a day. It doesn't get any easier than that, right? We can have our amazing protein shakes right here in the comfort of our home, drop shipped to us by UPS. Isn't that amazing? We only have to shop a very minimal it. Fiber boost. We all need a little fiber in our lives, right? 12 grams of soluble fiber that is going to help rid the body of that toxic body fat. It's tasteless, stabilizes our blood sugar, keeps you fuller longer, and helps clean things out through your digestive tract. Our detox tea. All right, that is a game changer. Detox tea is a non caffeinated herbal tea that is going to help flush the toxins from the liver and kidneys. And we all need that. It is not going to make you go to the bathroom. It's not one of those kind of products, but it's going to clean out the liver and the kidneys. And honestly, right now, most of us look like our liver and kidneys look like overcooked pasta in a sieve. We just are blocked up in there and we need something to help release those toxins that are built up so that when we do a program like this and start to eat healthier, we can release the toxins and thereby release the extra fat that is being held on our bodies. Digestion Plus. Now this, guys, is a game changer. This is the probiotic, the prebiotic and digestive enzyme that I talked about right in the beginning. This will help boost our ability to fight off good bacteria, or excuse me, bad bacteria and viruses, because our immune system lives in our gut. And if our gut is not being supportive and given the prebiotics, probiotics, and digestive enzymes that we need, then we are going to not be able to fight off that crud, okay? So we are going to add this every single day that will help keep everything in balance. We can help our body process our food more effectively, which in turn help your digestive system function more normally. When your system's at its best, we can take the nutrients from the food, these good nutrients that we are now adding to our body and support our normal organ functions. Digestion Plus contains prebiotics, probiotics, and digestive enzyme that works synergistically to naturally support your body's digestive system, helping you support optimal digestive health. And if there's anything that you do besides eliminating sugar, let's add this product to your life. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we wanna do. Oh my gosh. And then we have these amazing energy fizz sticks and I am sipping on mine right now. These are full of B vitamins grana, chromium, green tea. It helps us give a little boost of natural energy. You guys, I call these my, my nice mommy drinks. I have three kids and I am also a cheer coach. And boy, I'll tell you, 
those kids and those teenagers really push those buttons sometimes, don't they? But this gives me that added boost and mental clarity and it helps stabilize the blood sugar so that I can go on with my day and help people help themselves become more of the way that we are intended to be full of life and bigger and vitality. Love this. Replace your soda, replace, replace those sports drinks and do something good for yourself. So game changers right here. We also have part of the program where we have an essentials body cleanse. This again is a game changer on its own. It is a packet uh, of um, powder and it has ginger and lemon in it. A very mild tasting, tastes like a refreshing lemonade but it helps support the liver and your GI health. It's actually safe enough that you could use a packet of this every day. But when we're in the middle of this program, we use it during week three uh, to help support the elimination that is going on. And another game-changing product is our Greens Balance. This is a blend of greens, yellows, orange, purples, vegetables, and fruits that will add that nutrient wash to your body. When I get this in my body, it is like a, a beautiful wash of sunshine and heaven just taking this to the next level. A shot of this every day or add it to your shake or I even add it to my fizz can boost and add health that we are looking for. Absolutely a game changer. And then of course, we all should be taking a multivitamin. I love that ours is powdered. I just throw it in my shake or I throw it in my drink. It's tasteless and it has everything that I need to keep adding health to my body. Everybody should also be taking a solid omega-3. This also helps to add health to our bodies. It's great for heart health. It's great for mental clarity. Um, and if you have any kiddos or yourself or ever had a concussion um, and or are doing an activity that is at risk for concuss concussions, at least 1,000 to 3,000 milligrams a day has been proven to be protective because it helps prevent the shearing forces or the jarring that's going on in your brain. So a little bonus added tip for you there. Just imagine what you and your body could be 30 days from now. Here we are in this quarantine that is going to last 21, 30 days. Got to help us if it lasts longer. But if you commit to this, how amazing can you transform between now and then? And Easter happens during that time. What a beautiful season to come out and celebrate the resurrection in a whole new light, in a whole new you, just like Christ coming out with his whole new body and soul and giving us the gift of the butterfly and how that butterfly goes into the cocoon, but emerges. The caterpillar I say she goes into the, uh, to the cocoon, right? It emerges as a beautiful butterfly. How wonderful that we have the opportunity that we can do that easily. And friends, I will be there personally to coach you every step of the way. This is an affordable program. We really, $14 a day to replace two of your meals and then put together a whole foods meal that is good for the entire family. You get recipes, you get meal ideas that are super simple. And you know what? Our recipes are so good, like I said, for the whole entire family. So the whole family can benefit while you are doing this. So easy for moms and dads and aunts and uncles to all do this, okay? Again, there's ways to get healthy and we are here to help you do this. This is not about starvation. This is about adding health. We don't count calories. We don't count points. We don't count macros. 
we add health and I'm here to help you every step of the way. The way most people will come into this program is they will become a preferred client and have a beautiful membership with Arbon that allows you to get this program at 40% savings. And you will get all of the items that I mentioned, excuse me, <coughs> all of those products that I've mentioned, and that will take care of you for 30 days. Free product, free shipping, and you're gonna get that greens balance, which is so awesome. And we have a 45 day money get back guarantee folks on all of our products. So what do you have to lose? You have a lot of toxins to lose. You have a lot of blood sugar issues to lose. You have a lot of inflammation to lose, but you have everything to gain. You know, folks, um, another thing I'd be remiss to leave out would be um, anything that we put on and in our skin goes directly into our bloodstream within like 26 to 30 seconds. So we want to be sure that anything that you choose to put on your skin is free from harmful chemicals. And Arbonne was actually born from skincare many years ago, actually 40 years ago, that's where we started. And we've now transformed into this amazing health and wellness company. And in fact, um, healthy living from the inside out starts from inside and we notice it on our skin. So if you're looking for uh, to switch to more healthy products for you, your family, your babies, we can certainly help you with Arbon. But even more so, a lot of us are, are really not going to bed thinking about our wrinkles or getting rid of our toxins for the most part. Especially now, we are really thinking more about uh, our finances and our future and what all of this holds. Uh, the health and wellness industry, ladies and gentlemen, um, is here to serve and is here to make us all better because when we know when our health is well, we are not spending money um, on those uh, on the junk, right? We're not spending money on um, excessive doctor visits. Uh, God love our medical program because it, it is so vital and important for, um, for us to get the medical care that we need. But what if we took our health back and we didn't have to spend those kind of monies on medication and hospital stays and those kind of things? Um, we're concerned about car payments and college loans and I'm 52 and I'm concerned about saving for retirement. I didn't do the best job that I should have uh, because I had other things on my mind like paying high school tuition and now college tuition and I didn't take as much care about my retirement. So how do I, how can I do that um, and still be in service to others? Well, Arbonne has an opportunity for us to impact each other's lives, not only in health, but this business, this amazing business opportunity can change your life. So allow me to ask you, if you keep doing what you're doing now, where would you be in five years? What would happen if you lost your main source of income? How long would you last on your savings? And unfortunately right now, we're being asked that question straight up because people have and are losing their main source of income right now, every day. But with a business opportunity like Arbon, we have a virtual storefront. We have the opportunity to reach people over the internet. And God love Arbon and UPS, we can drop ship right to your homes. We run a global business right from our smartphones. And that is the business model of the 21st century. And yes, we do have a very generous compensation plan. And every financial expert agrees that everyone should have a plan B and multiple streams of income for those in certain times for such a time as this. Being a consultant will allow you the opportunity to make an additional $500 a month income or up to $1,000, $4,000.
four to fourteen thousand dollars a month and really an unlimited income these numbers are real and i can help you understand how that works by simply helping other people switch their brand from what they're currently using to what Arbon has to offer. They can shop right directly from their home in their pajamas, just like Amazon, right? But they're shopping from your virtual website. And we build a consumer base that shops over and over again. I've been with Arbon for 13 years and I have a beautiful set of loyal customers that reorder every month. And then from the business standpoint, where we get to build and teach and lead people and teach them about influence by training them on leadership, they can also build and open their own Arbonne virtual franchise. And by doing that, we're touching people around the globe. This is a great way of multiplying right? Not the, like the way the virus does. It goes crazy when things get nuts. And that's what we can do here with Arbonne, but we can do it in a safe and wonderful way to help people gain health. And what a beautiful way to serve everyone. Okay. We have a lot of power in duplication, like I just said, and you can see down here how that all works. But I know there's fears and hesitations out there. How do we do this? I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. I don't know enough people and I'm not a salesperson. People, I'm not a salesperson at all. I am someone who is passionate about helping others live their most vibrant and healthful lives. And I am blessed to have found a company that allows me to help others do the same. Buy our products from our online store and share these products. That is what we do. We have a global business in the USA. We are a US company. We can build business in UK, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and Poland. So I can work whenever these countries are doing business. So literally we have a 24 hour, seven day a week, beautiful business. And that's how we can grow and touch others globally. So I'm here to ask you if you're ready to make a change. Are you ready to move forward? And how can I help you shop online and become the best version of you? We're gonna stop buying retail products in the retail stores and paying high overhead for products filled with toxins. I'm gonna to ask you to start buying products at wholesale and discounted from your own store and get paid if you choose to when others purchase. If not, just share these amazing products with your family and friends and enjoy a preferred client discount. Let's pay it forward and share how Arbon can help others live better, healthier products. The wellness product, like I said before, it's a multi-billion dollar industry and we're moving into the trillions because we know how to do this and touch each other's lives. What would you do if you had that secondary stream of income right now? I know what you'd do. You'd turn around and you would bless others with it because that is the community of Mount Zion. This is what we do, right? Please reach out and let me know how I can be of service to you. My cell phone number is 440-724-1416. Again, 440-724-1416. And I'm certain that uh, my website and other social media platforms will be provided to you. But on Facebook, you can find me, Gretchen Toddy, T-O-D-D-Y, Ludwig, L-U-D, W-I-C-K. And from there, we can connect and help each other spread the good word of faith and hope and love and peace and joy, vibrancy and abundance. Thank you so much for taking the time today to learn more about what you can do to boost everything 
in your world to make you a healthier, happier version of you. You know, Mother Nature is giving us all these tools to help us be better. And we just have to work with her and our bodies and our internal systems so that we can be the best version of ourselves. Thank you again. Please reach out. I'm happy to answer any questions. Text me, Facebook me, Instagram me, however it is that I can best serve you. And if you would like samples of these amazing products, I would be happy to pack some up and mail them directly to you. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless you and your families. Have an amazing day and an amazing rest of Lent and the rest of the year. Thanks, everyone. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Green, and I am an independent skincare consultant for Rodan and Fields. Dr. Katie Rodan and Dr. Kathy Fields are two of the most leading names in skincare and dermatology. I am so proud to represent these two women, San Francisco-based dermatologists. They have developed a line of products that are clinically proven, dermatology-inspired, and satisfaction guaranteed to work. 60 days or your money back. <laughs> You're insecure, don't know what for. You're turning heads when you walk through the door. Don't need me. Rodan and Fields multi med therapy regimens are formulated to target the most common skincare concerns that the doctors see in their office. Each regimen contains a face wash, a toner, a treatment, and a moisturizer. I'll walk you through the common concerns that the doctors and myself hear from our clients. Redefine is a regimen for the appearance of lines, pores, and loss of firmness. Redefine refines skin's texture for softer, smoother looking skin. It effectively minimizes the appearance of pores by removing pore clogged dead skin cells, reduces the appearance of lines and wrinkles, hydrates and improves skin elasticity, and helps to visibly firm the skin. Included in this regimen is step one, redefine daily cleansing mask. Step two, redefine pore minimizing toner. Step three, redefine triple defense treatment. And redefine overnight restorative cream. Reverse brightening. This is a regimen for the appearance of brown spots, dullness, and discoloration. Reverse clears away dead, dulling, discolored skin cells, evens out visible discoloration, and provides a more fresh and radiant complexion, reduces the signs of skin aging, and reduces the appearance of uneven skin tone. This regimen includes step one, reverse deep exfoliating wash. Step two, reverse intensive brightening toner. Step three, reverse dual active brightening complex. And step four, reverse broad spectrum with an SPF 50 plus sunscreen. Soothe, a regimen for even the most sensitive of skin. The Soothe Regimen helps reduce the visible signs of sensitivity, fortifies the skin's natural moisture barrier to reduce sensitivity, reduces and neutralizes irritants on skin, noticeably improves skin tone and optical correctors, defends against future damage. The products included in the Soothe Regimen are as follows. Step one, Soothe Gentle Cream Wash. Step two, Soothe Sensitive Skin Treatment. Step three, Soothe Moisture Replenishing Cream. And step four, Soothe Mineral Sunscreen. Unblemish is a regimen for adult acne and the visible signs of aging. 
unblemished, clears blemishes, and prevents new ones from forming. It calms the skin and helps reduce the appearances of blotchiness. Deep cleans and clears pores, reducing their visible size, smooths, firms, and evens out skin tone and texture, controls and reduces skin oiliness. Included in the unblemish regimen is step one, gentle exfoliating acne wash. Step two, clarifying toner. Step three, dual intensive acne treatment. And step four, shine-free lotion. The next two regimens that I would like to introduce to you are formulated for teens and young adults. Could dress up to get love, but guess what? I'm never gonna be that girl who's living in a Barbie world. Could wake up and make up and play dumb, pretending that I need a boy who's gonna treat me like a toy. I know. I look forward to connecting with you soon. If you're interested in any of the products that I spoke about, I could be reached via my Instagram page, Elizabeth Green underscore official. Green with an E, G-R-E-E-N-E. -E -E. Thank you so much for watching my video. And like I said, I totally look forward to connecting with you. Rodan and Fields, dermatology inspired, clinically proven and satisfaction guaranteed life-changing skincare. Thanks so much. Here that can carry us throughout this week. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, amen. 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 Today I want to talk about adversity. Say adversity. What is adversity to you? This is the question we want to ask ourselves today is what is adversity to you? What does adversity do to your spirit? How does adversity affect your life or affect your mood? Can anybody tell me what adversity is to them? What is adversity? What is adversity? Go ahead. Uh-huh. Right, and that's what you have to do when you're faced with it, right? But what does adversity do to your mood? How, let's be honest with each other. What does it do to you? How does it make you feel? It changes you. Yeah, it, it changes you. It, 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 it turns you almost into a different person. You look in the mirror and you say, this is not the same person I used to be. Adversity can affect you in so many ways. Go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> Right. And it, and it destroys your world. You wake up one day feeling good. God is good. Everything's going all right. Then you get a little adversity and what happens? All of a sudden you say, oh man, this, these towers are coming down. It's a bad situation. See, that's what adversity can do to your life. And so what we want to talk about today is how to handle that adversity when it comes to your life. Here's our text for today. It's found in Proverbs 24.10. The Bible says this, and I, before we read the one up there, I just want to read it from the King James Version in Proverbs 24, 10. The Bible says this, repeat after me, say, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Now repeat after me, say, if you falter in a time of trouble, how small <clears throat> is your strength? If you falter in the time of trouble, how small is your strength? Isn't that a good question? If you falter when you meet adversity, if you falter when things get tough, at the end of the day, you, you may question yourself, how small is my strength really? How strong am I really if when adversity hits me, I, I'm just done for the day? I can't move on. I can't, I can't keep on going. How small is my strength? 
You know, I was reading uh, the commentary, which gives us a little, uh, a little more depth into the verse, uh, the Matthew Henry commentary, and I want to read it to you. It says this, in the day of adversity, we are apt to faint, to droop and be discouraged, to desist from work, from our work, and to despair of relief. Our spirits sink, and then our hands hang down, and our knees grow feeble, and we become unfit for anything. Anybody know some folk that they get a little adversity, they're good for nothing. You can't borrow a dollar from them. You can't ask them to do anything because they're out, out for the count. And often those that are most cheerful when they are well droop most. The cheerful people, the people that you feel are the happiest, they're the ones that are affected most when adversity hits. And it says this, and, and, and most dejected when anything ails them. This is an evidence that our strength is small and is a means of weakening it even, even more. It is a sign that thou art not a man or woman of any resolution, any firmness of thought, any consideration, any faith. Say faith. For faith is the strength of the soul. If thou cast not bear up, under an afflictive change of thy condition. Some are so feeble that they cannot bear nothing. If a trouble does but touch them. Job 4, 5 will help you out with that. Nay, if any it does but threaten them, they faint immediately and are ready to give up all for gone. And by this means they render themselves unfit to grapple with their trouble and are unable to help themselves. Be of good courage, therefore, and God shall strengthen thine heart. Anybody remember that show, uh, Sanford and Son? I have to admit, I used to love Sanford and Son. I sneak, sneak and watch TV all the time. I watch every episode. I think I've seen every episode of Sanford and Son. And, and one thing, what, what, what always happened to Fred when something would happen that was crazy, when he messed some adversity? What was happening to him? He'd grab his heart, and he said, oh, I'm having the big one. He'd have a heart attack. Everything, something would happen. He'd just curl up, and he's having the big one. He'd just falling out every single time. Anybody know some folk that just fall out when adversity hits? And so we as Christians, we have to realize that we too can fall out when adversity hits. But we have to learn how to strengthen ourselves, how to strengthen our heart. So when adversity hits, we can be strong and we can get through it. See, basically the Bible teaches that you can't allow adversity to steer you off the path that God has laid out for you. See, it's during the times of adversity where we really know how strong we really are. That's when we really know that all our work is not in vain. That's when we know that all the time we studied the word of God and went to church and received the word, that we were able to apply it into our lives. Daniel in the Bible, he's a great example of this. Daniel in the Bible. Most of us remember <clears throat> how Daniel, he was thrown into the lion's den. Now, if you don't know the story of Daniel, just let me know. And it's okay, we'll talk about it. But Daniel was thrown in a den of lions. And we know this. We knew this. When Daniel was thrown in that den, when Daniel was taken away to be thrown in the den, we knew that God had the power to prevent Daniel from being thrown into that lion's den. We even knew that while they were planning what was going to happen to Daniel, that God was watching his captors. Also, God could have caused them to fall down and die, but during that situation, God kept quiet for a while. And see, and when Daniel's enemies went to report him to the king and they arrested him, God saw that. And he didn't say a thing when Daniel was on that walk to the lion's den. And the question is, if we were thrown inside that lion's den, would you come out alive like Daniel? Daniel taught us a great lesson in that story on how to come out unscathed in a lion's den of life. He had built up strength in the Lord that no adversity could overtake him. In fact, he had so much faith, he made it through a lion's den. See, the people who threw Daniel into the lion's den forgot certain things. First of all, they forgot that it was God that created the lions. God is the creator of all things. Even the adversity we face. So ultimately, if God allowed you to, to get to it, he also has the power to get you through it. And see, second of all, 
<clears throat> this is what his captives forgot. Second of all, they forgot that God has supreme power. Say supreme power. Supreme power. He has supreme power. He has control over the good. He has control over the bad. He has control over everything. He has supreme power. Third of all, they forgot that the Son of God himself is called the Lion of Judah. And fourth of all, they forgot that Daniel was a son of the Lion of Judah. And we are sons of daughters of the Lion of Judah. So he was the son of a greater lion than the lions in that den. And so from this story, we ultimately learn that the God of Daniel came to his rescue and he did not come late. He did, and, and at the end of the day, God is not going to come late in your situation. See, he doesn't always come when we want him to come, but at the end of the day, God is always right on time. And see, we can't forget that when we're facing adversity. See, Daniel did some things when he was faced with adversity, when he was in the lion's den, when he was faced with the situation, when he was faced with those times that would make him scared and, and frightened. What did he do in the lion's den? The first thing he do, do, did was he prayed. The first thing you got to do when you're faced with adversity and you're faced in the lion's den of life is you've got to pray to God. You've got to communicate with God. There is a prayer that says this. Keep this in your spirit. It says, let me continually confuse my enemy in the name of Jesus. How many want your enemy confused? Confuse my enemy in the name of Jesus. Just, just what happened in the case of Daniel. His enemies were not clear on who they were trying to take out. See, they didn't know about the relationship that Daniel had with the Lord. They didn't want to pay attention to it. Even if they knew about it, they didn't want to pay attention to the fact that he had God on his side. And so the men who threw Daniel into the den, they, eat, they ended up themselves being eaten. So the sword taken up against Daniel by his enemy turned against them. Go figure, look at that. When they were planning to destroy Daniel, they did not know that at the end of the day, they were planning their own destruction. And see, when you have that relationship with God, your enemies are doing nothing but just planning their own destruction. And see, when you got the Lord on your, side, on your side, I don't want you to forget that, and you walk by faith, and you stay in constant contact with God through prayer and supplication, the plot against you is really a suicide mission for those that are planning to hurt you. See, many times God per, per, uh, permits our enemy to try us so that they can know that God is great. See, sometimes your trials and tribulations, your adversity, is used to show your enemy what God can really do. See, the Bible teaches this. The Bible says, many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. See, you'll go through a lot, but the Lord can bring you out of all of them. Not just some of them, not just a portion of them, but the Lord can actually bring you out of all of your afflictions. The righteous keeps all his bones, the Bible says, so that none of them is broken. See, therefore, when adversity hits, when, when tough time hits, don't ever give up on your service to the Lord or give up in the face of this adversity. It is like taking three steps forward and, and four steps back. Don't take back steps when adversity hits your life the bible says this the bible says this i deliver good news the bible says that the hairs on your head are numbered i like that if the little follicles of hair on our hair is numbered doesn't that mean that god really cares doesn't that mean God cares about us intricately? If the Lord says that he knows the number of hairs on your head, you know he cares about your life. You know he cares about your life. And see, God has delivered so many countless times. We forget. We have amnesia. It's like today. We forgot about how good we ate on last Thursday. Some of us are hungry. I got the nerve to want lunch after all I ate last week. We, how soon we forget the countless times when things seem hopeless in our lives where he came through right in the nick of time. There's got to be at least one witness here this afternoon that knows that God was there for you right in the nick of time. And see, that's how God shows up. If you look at this, if you look at this, here's a prime example. <clears throat> if you look at the Israelites on the Red Sea, uh, why did God, think about this, why did God wait until the Egyptians 
were very close to them before he intervened when they were faced with an incrossable Red Sea. And it's because of this. It's because sometimes God comes when things look very hopeless in your life. Sometimes God will wait till you're at an incrossable path where you don't understand how that breakthrough is going to come loose. That's the time that God says, hey, I'm above all that. I'm beyond all that. When the doctor throws up their hands in despair and the lawyers say that it's a hopeless case, it is then that the Father God starts working in your life. That's why you should never disconnect your telephone call with God. A lot of times we keep the telephone right on the side of the bed, but I don't know about you, but I want to keep that telephone off the hook. I want to keep that connection with God. I want to keep God on the line at all times. I don't want to have to dial a number. I want to already be connected. See, that's what your relationship with God is all about. It's about staying connected at all times. So when you need him, all you have to do is, is, is talk. You don't have to call him up. Old Sam said, call him up and tell him what you want. I want to already be connected. So I don't have to make the call. See, Daniel never hung up the phone on God. See, many people today only have God on what I want to call speed dial and Jesus on the text when they need him. But you've got to stay connected with him in the good times and you've got to even stay connected with him during the bad times. No matter what's going on, we've got to be able to stand no matter what. And at the end of the day, as believers in Christ Jesus, we have to be A-plus students in the school of adversity. There's a school of adversity. There's adversity that's going to come into our life. In this world, you're going to have some trials and tribulations. So there's a school of adversity. But you've got to always get an A. We can't fail in the school of adversity. What are the failures in the school of adversity? There are people who get confused by adversity. They allow it to confuse their life. They allow it to fog up and cloudy their life. There are people <clears throat> who become bitter because of problems, so they can't continue to move on. Bitterness into, the, into their lives, bitterness against everybody. Anybody know somebody that one thing happened in their life, and they just bitter against everybody, not just the thing that caused it. There are people who fall apart who completely disintegrate when adversity comes. They, they lose moments in their life. Um, they lose those things. They are those who respond with anger and they're filled with hatred in their life. And they let that ingrain their system. They're those who give up, who abandon all the good things they come across, all because of adversity they experience in their life. And so when this discouragement happens to adversity, when people get discouraged, this is what happens. When people get discouraged, they pray the wrong prayer. <clears throat> when people get discouraged, they say the wrong things to God. In Numbers 11 and 1 Kings 19, Moses and Elijah pray to die because of discouragement. When people get discouraged, they say the wrong things. Look at the wrong things that Job said in Job chapter 3. One of them was basically that he wishes he was never born. When people get discouraged, they begin to see the wrong things. They can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. They can't see that at the end of the day, there's something good that's going to come out of this situation. When people get discouraged, they end up in the wrong place. They start making the wrong decisions. They start going in the wrong directions. They've taken the three steps forward and the four steps back. When people get discouraged, they get into the wrong spirit. Sometimes you have to have the right spirit to get out of what you're in. And if you stay in the bad spirit, how are you ever going to climb out of this situation? How are you ever going to have the strength to carry, to get out of it? So discouragement is what I'm really trying to tell you is a dangerous thing. So the only way to be it is to, to beat it is to be like David did, and that is to encourage yourself in the Lord. You've got to encourage yourself. Say encourage yourself. <clears throat> See, discouraged people don't hear from and cannot communicate good with God. The devil knows this. He knows that, encour that encouragement brings hope, but discouragement brings hopelessness. And despair into your life. He knows that when the people are encouraged, they can stand on their feet. But when they're discouraged, they start feigning and failing. 
So whenever there's adversity, the first thing the devil brings along is discouragement. A lot of people die because of discouragement. Discouragement has killed many people. But when your heart is encouraged, you receive good things from the Lord. A good example of this is during World War II. I heard this story of World War II. All the children who were rescued from the consecration, concentration camps were suffering from malnutrition and hunger. We all know about what happened to the Jews during World War II. They were in these consecration, concentration camps, and you had these young children, and they were malnutrition. They had no hunger, and when they were rescued and brought into another camp, and they were looked after, and they were given food, they still couldn't sleep at night. They still had a problem. The people looking after them, they were amazed. They said, we, we're taking care of the children now. They're not in the peril anymore. What is wrong with them? Every night, they were restless. The doctors looked at them but did not know what was wrong with these children. But not until somebody came and, and advised them that they should give a slice of bread to each of these young children to hold in their hands as they go to bed. They did this, and that night, each and every one of those kids slept. What was the problem with those children? What was the problem? They were used to worrying where the next meal would come from. And that made them restless until they could not sleep. But with the breads in their hands, they could fall asleep. So ultimately, discouragement is not just about your current circumstances, but it also is a personal decision. See, oftentimes we need to make a, a conscious effort not to be discouraged. You've got to remember that nobody can discourage you because it's a personal decision. We choose to allow it. If you want to encourage yourself, it's also a personal decision. Allowing adversity to bring discouragement in your life leads to failure in your life. And so, and so our initial text for today in Proverbs 24.10 basically tells us that you should always be ready for battle. You don't have to wait for it. You got to be ready for it. The truth is adversity is going to come. The truth is we've all been through adversity. The truth is you were all in some adversity from time to time. You're either coming out of it, you're either going in it, or you're either in it right now. And you have to be strong before it comes. You have to prepare for it at all times. If you don't prepare, you won't be able to face it like you could. So how do we defeat adversity? Here's the question. How do we defeat adversity? First, in time of peace, you got to always remember that it's in a time of peace where you always prepare for war. So the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. If you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. If thou faint not in the day of adversity, thy strength is nothing. So secondly, don't be distracted. Avoid the distractions of life. There are many distracted people around. They take their minds away from the most important things in life. You've got to set your mind on God. Old saying says, I want to keep my mind stayed on who? Stayed on Jesus. Because every good and perfect gift comes from above. Oftentimes what we do, even though every good and perfect gift, com gift comes from above, we allow people to distract us, therefore opening us up to allowing adversity to weaken us. And see, we can't let that adversity weaken us. But sometimes we just got to hold on to the living water of God. See, we, we're going, we're, 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 uh, we're, we got experience, we're going to experience people that will praise us and make us feel good, but there are also going to be some people around us that may put us down and discourage us. But we've got to be like the young man who was put to the test, and I want you to remember this story. We've got to be like the young man who was put to the test. There's a story about a young man, and he was a prisoner of war. So he was put to the test. His captors gave him an uh, ultimatum to uh, basically live or die. The soldier said this. He said the test is this. He was to carry a glass full of water in the middle of the street for three miles to a certain well to dump the water in. And so if he did this, his captor said, we will spare your life. And if he didn't make it, his captor said, you'll be executed. So the enemy soldier set it up. 
they set up this challenge and so they arranged two rows of soldiers on both sides of the street. The people on one side were praising a young man, clapping for him, cheering for him, cheering him on to make it across the street. While the ones on the other side were criticizing him and abusing him and throwing rocks at him. Well, well the young man, he carried that glass of water those three miles and successfully took it to the well. When the young man was asked, what is the secret to your success? He said, I just concentrated on the water because I knew my life depended on it. See, what I want to say today is that he didn't concentrate on what was happening around him. He didn't care about the praises or the abuses. He just focused on the task at hand. And so, I, and he said, our lives depend on it. And see, if you can just focus on the task that God has set for you, the adversity will never overtake you. If you can just set your, thing, your life and your, your priorities on things eternal, that adversity in your life is but for a moment. But at the end of the day, God will see you through. I don't know about you, but I believe that God will see us through every bit of adversity that can come to our lives. And that's why we should always stay in communication with him. That's why we should always get our strength from the Lord because it is his strength that will see you through. And so you need to know today that we have to keep our strength and our faith and our trust in the Lord so when rough times come, we shall not be moved. We shall not be shaken. And in the day of adversity, when it comes, our strength will be strong. Because God didn't make us to be weak. God made you to be strong. And if you can work on that strength, if you can have faith in the good times and the bad, if you can keep that connection, if you don't have to call them up because you already got the phone right on your ear, God will deliver you through everything you go through. Again, we'd like to welcome you to the Freedom Conference. Here's some information about some of our sponsors. The info will be posted on Facebook so that you can contact them and receive some of their awesome services. Embassy Healthcare, the woods in Solon Point. They believe family is the most important thing. They are the city's leader in assistant living, and they provide outstanding care. From therapy and medication management to meals and activities, they work to ensure in a time like this that seniors in their resident life is lived to the fullest. Also, if your family is important to you, come to the woods in Southern Point where they become our family too. Also, Willow Park, the place for memory care and rehabilitation. They also specialize in Alzheimer's care and dementia care. Contact them for a tour. Then there's Grand Pavilion, a skilled nursing home for our seniors located in Oakwood Village. Call them at 440-439-1448 or find them at embassyhealthcare.net. Then there's AT&T. They have a program called Believe Cleveland. Believe Cleveland is an AT&T employee-led initiative to lift up neighborhoods in need of improved digital literacy and technology-based learning. They're focusing on their company's broad assets, the people, their hiring, and also their services and their contributions to help citizens access opportunities that they deserve to succeed in education, careers, and life. Their Believe Community collaborators provide free and in some cases stipend-based programming to help you gain the digital skills that you need. Skills that can lead to improved career opportunities. So take a look at the resources that also AT&T is offering business opportunities to be authorized resellers. And basically these are opportunities to have your own business. They will invest in you so you can start your own business. For more information, contact Anthony Mercado at 201-683-1840 or email him at am260t at att.com or go to att.com backslash att backslash new dealer. Thanks to all of our sponsors. Again, AT&T, Embassy Healthcare, PNC Bank and their Fairfax Connection. Also First National Bank, University Hospitals, North Star Advisory Group, Jim Serace and the Daily Grind, Dollar Bank, and of course, Huntington Bank, Thrive and Financial, and First National Bank, and the United Pastors in Mission. These are all of our great sponsors who have so much to offer. Go to their websites, find out about their representatives, and talk to them because they really want to help you reach the goal of 
freedom in all aspects of your life. And that will conclude our webinar of the Freedom Conference. This year, of course, we had to modify some things due to the coronavirus, but next year it's going to be better than ever. We're going to gather together and all of our guests will be in the house. Thank you again for getting this information. It's all about empowering you. This is the Freedom Conference. Watch again in replay.